Everybody knows that if you were to eat over 10 million bananas, the radiation from the potassium-40 would be enough to kill you. Yeah, that's right. Your bananas contain a very small amount of potassium-40, which makes them ever so slightly radioactive. Likewise, pretty much anything with carbon in it has a very small amount of carbon-14, which is also radioactive. Now, if you know anything about plastic, you'll know that plastic is made out of lots of carbon polymers. And if you know anything about Lego, you'll know that Lego is made out of plastic, which means <gasps> your Lego is radioactive? Cancel all your BrickLink orders, evacuate Legoland, get on Ryan's life insurance policy. This is it. The apocalypse. Whoa, I'm waking up. I feel it in my bones. Enough to make my sister- wait, wait, hold up, hold, hold, hold up. Yep, oh, okay, sorry, that, that's Imagine Dragons. Okay, yeah, so obviously nothing's gonna happen. There is carbon-14 everywhere. It's in the air you breathe, in the trees that you see, in the grass that you eat. In the milk that the farmer comes and steals from you. Wait, hold, hold, hold up, hold. Yep, that, that's a cow. The point is, you are very safe from any amount of radiation that the carbon-14 in your Lego might produce. Especially since plastic has less carbon-14 than the atmosphere, or the trees, or the grass, or the milk. But it does beg the question, how much Lego would you need to own? before you die from the radiation of it. Spoiler alert, it's a very big number. Step one is to figure out, well, how much carbon-14 is in your Lego in the first place. So basically, how we get carbon-14 here on Earth is you'll have a happy little nitrogen atom way up in the upper atmosphere. It doesn't really matter what it's bonded to, though. It's probably another nitrogen atom, but that doesn't matter. The point is, incoming cosmic rays from the sun can turn it into carbon-14. That carbon-14 can then make its way into the air and food that us plants and animals breathe and eat. The carbon-14 that makes its way into your body is always decaying back into nitrogen, but it is continuously replenished by new carbon-14s. Until you die, that is. Then you're stuck with whatever you had when you died, and it all starts turning back. That brings us to Lego, which is made out of ABS plastic, and yeah, I'm just gonna ignore all the different dyes and stuff, because that's just gonna overcomplicate things. Plastic, as you may know, comes from dead dinosaurs and dead plants, but mostly dead plants. Which means that the carbon in your Lego is very old, and any carbon-14 has had a long time to turn back into nitrogen. Most of the petroleum that we mine is between 66 and 252 million years old. Now I'm just going to go ahead and average the two at 159. Technically I should probably take a geometric mean, but oh well. Carbon-14 has a half-life of about 5,700 years. That just means that after 5,700 years your body will only have half of the amount of carbon-14 that it originally had, and after another 5,700 years it'll only have a quarter and then an eighth and then it'll so on and so on. So, if the carbon in your Lego is 159 million years old, that means that about 27,895 half-lives have passed since our carbon first went into the ground. When that carbon was first in the ground, you would find that for every trillion carbon atoms, one of them would be carbon-14. But now, after 159 million years, if we assume that there is no way for any new carbon-14 to get into your Lego plastic, you would need to dig through seven non-nonagen septagenti dumilitillion atoms of carbon just to find one that is carbon-14. And yes, non-nonagen septagenti dumilitillion is a real number. It is equal to 10 to the 8400th power. For reference, a lot of scientists estimate the number of atoms in the observable universe to be 10 to the 80th. So basically, you'd need more or less 10 to the 8,320 observable universes full of just Lego to find a single atom of carbon-14. There are already trillions of carbon-14 atoms in your body right now, so to get a lethal dose, you would need even more carbon-14 atoms from the Lego than are already in your body. 
And that means that you would have to have a lot more universes full of just Lego. Even if you somehow could own that much Lego, there's no guarantee that all those carbon-14 atoms would be anywhere near you. If you wanted to guarantee that they would be close enough for you to ever even feel the effects of the radiation, you would have to compact the Legos down so tightly that it would just collapse into a black hole with a mass several Google, 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 Google times the mass of our universe. And now I understand why the banana thing became a meme, but the Legos never did. Eating 10 million bananas in one sitting is ridiculous, but it's still comprehensible. The radioactivity of Legos just isn't. So, thank you for watching the most ridiculous video on my channel to date, but I promise that if you click on one of these end screen videos, you will get something a lot more worthwhile and less ridiculous than what, what this was.